Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN. Welcome back to the only individual championship in the sport of volleyball. 44 of the top athletes on the planet. We're underway season three. The champ is here. Hip -hop. And all of a sudden, here comes Ari Cruz. Dump Anderson's all over. Ooh. How about that, though? Danielle Hart is ready. Pence with another day. She hit 25, a record setter. Back row attack. The Thai American Association of Arizona is here to win on Captain Luzar. Another kill for Willow Johnson. This for the golden set and the set win. Yes! For the second time in league history, we're going to a golden set. Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN, presented by Tops. We're in Mason, Arizona at Legacy Park. Come on inside. This is the first match of week two. We've got a double header for you today. This will be Team Hence versus Team Linehan starting us off. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Anne Marie Anderson, alongside three-time Olympian Holly McPeak. Savannah Collins will be joining us a little bit later. But let's begin. Week one was fantastic, Holly. What were your impressions? Well, you and I got to be fans. So many athletic highlights in all the matches. But what was really impressive was Lee Edmond was the captain for Team Purple. They swept every category, statistically and wins. And because of that, Four of those team purple players are captains today. That's right. And so in this first match, let's take a look at this matchup. Linehan and Hentz are both team captains. Morgan Hentz and Allie Linehan. What do you like about the squads that they picked? Well, both captains went for firepower off the top of the draft. Willow Johnson leads in kills. She went early, as did Betty De La Cruz. They were on the same teams last year. They will face off on other sides of the net today. Willow Johnson, the left-hander on the outside, boom. She was bringing the power and the versatility of Betty De La Cruz. You saw them score often for that gold team last week. Betty De La Cruz, meanwhile, has been a captain every week since 2021. This is the first time that she is. And pretty surprising, but it was an impressive weekend for Purple. She went off the draft very quickly because of that. Yeah, she and Willow Johnson were among the top three first picks. Claire Chasse was number one overall. Willow Johnson played her ball in Oregon, but she is from this area and so has lots of family visiting. Holly, you and I saw her years ago at Oregon. How has she developed? Since then, I, she's always had incredible range, but I feel like she's stronger. We saw her really crush the ball, but Bet Betty De La Cruz, number 81, really impressive, can score from both pins out of the back row as well. There you see Willow Johnson in 44 for orange. First serve will be handled by Zaskia Hippa of Team Blue. Pass is solid outside, big swing off the block. So important to stay in system. That means delivering that good pass to the setter so she can run all her options. Maria Schlegel strikes first. Mutsara Tomkom, who was a captain last week. Little short serve. Oh, that's what you usually love about a short serve. It sets up the overpass, but not there. Short serves can be so disruptive, but not there because Brooke Nunville are able to get that one up and over. Natalia Valentine Anderson was able to get the joust. Brooke Nunnaviller serving down the line. Anderson goes outside, Betty De La Cruz, dug, absorbed by White. Here's a free ball, you'll have all options available. They choose behind, Nutsara, big dig. Covering her own. 
What a rally. The second rally of week two. Betty De La Cruz ends it with a sharp cross. Love the defense, both sides of the net. Finally, De La Cruz able to go inside the block. You see the dig off the deflection by Kendall White sliding under that ball to keep it alive. And then the one hand set to Bastianelli in the middle. Nellivero served down the line last time. This time, Kendall White in the middle. Passes it, and it's just a broken play from the beginning. Serve and pass is a key for team, hence the blue team. They wanted to win that serve and pass game, so they've got strong first contact players, and they're putting some pressure on Team Orange from the service line. Team Blue leading 3-1 in set one. This time, White puts it on the target. Betty De La Cruz, tough angle coming over her shoulder. Johnson winds up for a big swing. Another time, using her range, it's being dug. Betty De La Cruz. Kendall White will try Schlegel. Little tip, this is gonna be a big night if the rallies are going this long already. Tough angle never over. If you're new to Aura Pro, here's an overview of the league. Look, this is the only individual championship in the sport of volleyball. 44 world-class athletes, it's divi they're divided among four teams. There's a draft every Tuesday to make new teams, so you're gonna be with different people every week. <laughs> Through the hands, picked up by Tom Com. Back row attack, trying to make it work. Heavy. Back in the face, Willow. Johnson swing. Hard and harder, finding that back third of the court is Betty De La Cruz. Well, Team Orange is trying for the matchup. Willow Johnson on the left side against the small blocker, Natalia Valentin Anderson. But Willow Johnson is a left-handed player. She's better on the right side. Blue is able to win that rally by digging it and going cross-body by De La Cruz. 5-1 Team Blue as Hens continues her service run. Or excuse me, Nunny Miller continues her service run. 14 Hens. Kendall White unable to grab that one, and they're painting the lines, Holly. They certainly are, but that time Orange team made an adjustment. They put Willow Johnson on the right, but still trying to go for that mismatch. The smallest blocker on the court, Natalia Valentin Anderson for Team Blue. They're trying to attack over her. 6-1, Team Blue. It has been a run by Brooke Nunneviller behind the service line. Allie Linehan in the middle back right now. The big option. Willow Johnson at home. They're going to try her again. It's a big block to try to go over Rosenthal. Hence picks that up easily. Betty De La Cruz off hands. She shows she's got range in that sharp angle and then tools off the outside hand of the blocker. This is a good transition set out to that left hand and going off the outside hand of Willow Johnson. Timeout for Team Linehan as Team Hens is on a run. We'll be back, see if Linehan can get something going. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments.
Team Heads is a collective group that works together, has all that heart. They wear their heart on their sleeve. Um, the effort is always there on every point, whether we win the point or not, and lots of tight huddles. Just coming together after each point, whether we win or not, um, and just having a lot of joy and representing the fun in the game. Morgan Hans, a captain and a player from Team USA, is one of the captains today. Here's the draft. It happens every Tuesday. There's five every Tuesday for the six weeks. Purple has the first pick, 40 total selections. To understand a little bit more about this, let's introduce the third member of our team, Savannah Collins. Even though Morgan Hintz is a first time captain, she knew what she was looking for in the draft room. There were two things she prioritized, high hitting percentage and strong servers. She said, no matter what level of volleyball it is, some things are gonna remain the same. And it's that you have to win the serve pass game to succeed in this league too. She said she did feel some pressure being a libero drafting her team. She felt like I had to put my entire offense together, unlike the other captains who kind of have that built in within themselves. But she's hoping to use that unique perspective to her advantage, being able to create great matchups at the net for her hitters and being able to see the floor in a way that maybe some other captains don't. Savannah, noticing that Brooke Nunneviller is starting this week, she didn't play a ton last week. Do you have any insight on that? Yeah, Morgan said that's someone to expect to see a little bit more of this week. She said Brooke is a great passer and defender. That's what Morgan really likes in her outside hitters. And she's liking putting her opposite Betty De La Cruz, who is going to pack that power and maybe gives Brooke some opportunity to really get to play within herself what she does best this week. Thank you, Savannah. It's worth noting, too, Holly, that Morgan Hans and Brooke Nunneviller both played for the national team, both traveled to Turkey this summer as teammates for Volleyball Nations League. So they've got experience together. And Brooke Nunneviller was a libero for a college team before she got moved to that outside position. So superb defense and first contact helps key, keep Team Hens in system. Serving for Team Linehan is Ali Bastianelli. Going at Nunneviller. Look if they were prepared for that set. It's coming. Oh! The block was down. Hence got under it. Trying to go for that angle again down the line. What it is about Betty De La Cruz's hand contact? Well, she's got incredible range. She's established her sharp angle, but she's been able to grow, go cross-body. Look at she had a tiny little window and just Fantastic hand contact. How about the solo, the <laughs> dig, only one block in front of Hens, and she's still able to come up with that ball defensively. Natalia Valentin Anderson serve, handled. Brooke from the backcourt. Lenahan again, but shut down. And it's the defense right now that is the anchor for Team Hence in blue. Flat serve, it missed just by a hair. So we're talking about the scoring and the leaderboard and how it all works. Let's give you a little more in depth. The scoring breakdown, win points. When your team wins, you get 60 points for an overall win, but you also get 40 points for each set win. Individual stats, there'll be more on that later on. But nearly every action has a point value. That's gonna be over. Nutsara goes outside. Saskia, kill. Team Linehan struggling to put the ball. They're getting good looking swings, but the defense of Team Hens just picking up everything and then being able to swing back in transition. This one off the inside hand of the middle blocker by Hippa. Score now 11 4. Team Hens leading. Taking a look at the points breakdown so you can follow along a little bit with how people are getting it. If you have a service ace, it's plus 12. The same with a block, grade stops. If you make errors, 
you will lose points based on those errors. Those are added up at the end, along with whether or not your team won the set and then who won the match. It's three sets regardless. <laughs> Trying to change it up. And Nana Viller, hence said she wanted to see her more this week. What do you think? Brooke Nana Viller is a fantastic all-around player. Offensively, she made a big push for playing time late last weekend. Good out of the back row, smart, has all the shots. But I really think it's her defense and her first contact as well as her serve that keeps her in the lineup. Speaking of serve, Betty De La Cruz behind the service line. She has six aces after the first week. Pass is perfect. That's the second block by Team Hentz on the right side. Emma Willis, the middle blocker in blue number 54, doing a really nice job getting out and closing that block. Block set by Zaskia Hippa, that right side player. She sets up the block, and then you close there for the block. Second serve by De La Cruz. Tape, well passed, absolutely perfect pass, allowing Linehan to get up, put it down, and get De La Cruz off the end line. That time, Nutsara Tomcom had to go low to push that ball up and out to Linehan, but it pays off. Nutsara Tomcom, the setter, is front court. For Team Linehan, and she can attack. Middle was turning. I'm not sure if that was going to be in, Holly. May have gotten a save from Team Linehan. It caught a part of the tape. It might have been going wide, but Willow Johnson did not want to chance that. Emma Willis is serve. Willow Johnson, that's called a D ball from the right back of the court. And Nutsara Tomcom feeding Willow Johnson perfectly, a little bit of a lead behind that three meter line because Willow Johnson is now in the back row. So if she's going to take off on her attack, she needs to take off behind that three meter line, that white horizontal line across the court. It's interesting crossing pattern that they had there as well. Just straight power ripping down the line. Zaskia Hippa, a lot of big plays early on. She's been really impressive showing her range. She loves attacking that line. Watch Team Linehan make that adjustment, maybe take that away from her. She's called a Zassi. Tougher pass to work with. Holly, that would be what we call an out-of-system play. Correct. That ball that is passed behind that three-meter line, that line that we just talked about, would create an out-of-system play where you're limited on your options and your offense becomes more predictable. Exactly. So, again, just explaining it a little bit more for people as they're watching, it reduces what the setter can have as options. And your setter didn't even get the hand on the ball. Nutsara Tomko, who's one of the best setters in the world, she's not even able to get to that ball to run the offense. So you want to push your pass up in front of that three meter line. Betty De La Cruz has done a little bit of everything tonight. What has been special about her? Well, no surprise there. She's got a fantastic all around game, but it's her offense. That's why she gets drafted so quickly. Watch her, there, you see the angle inside the block, and we saw her turn that crossbody down the line, finding just a little sliver of an opening, but the pace of her arm, she's got all the offensive tools. You really got a good look there at Betty De La Cruz's hand on that, using the block by putting her hand on the right side of the ball. And I think what makes her so dangerous is this pace of her hand. Yes. It's <laughs> such a quick movement. She looks like she's kind of going up casually, and then boom, the arm comes through, and it's tough to stop. She already has four kills at 12. Let's see, kills are eight points apiece. So an ace and a block are 12. Betty De La Cruz with four kills. Speaking of aces, for every ace during this year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. Heading into this week, 280 trees have been committed just after week one, thanks to Aspiration support. That's incredible. Yes, it's incredible, and it is going to be a lot of trees. Betty De La Cruz, 60 of those trees came off of her last week. 
What has been the key to Team Hens' success so far? Defense. By 10. Defense. And you know with a captain like Morgan Hens, your team better play some defense. And I think she drafted like-minded players because that's what you do. And defense and strong service pressure are really the foundation of Team Hens in blue. Morgan Hetz has been in Team USA gym all summer. She traveled and played with the national team internationally. And Savannah was over there kind of listening in to the huddle. Savannah, what'd you get out of that? Well, Morgan Hintz has been able to do exactly what they practice and what you mentioned, what she went for in the draft room. She said what's been key. She said, let's keep it up on this service game. We are keeping them so off balance that they're unable to run the fast offense that we predicted from the orange team. And she could not help but shout out the blocking that we're seeing from HIPAA. She has loved that. She said, keep pressing. Don't let them use our hands. She's super satisfied with her team seeing all the things they worked on throughout the week in practice come to play in this game so far. Savannah, I'm curious, in the huddle, did anybody talk besides Morgan Hentz or was it just Hentz talking? Absolutely, you'll see kind of clusters form during timeouts. Natalia Valentin Anderson was getting coordinated with Emma Willis talking about blocking and getting their time together as a, a middle and a setter. And then their facilitator steps in too, Dave Rubio. He has a unique perspective of things that he's seeing. Morgan Hintz is the type of person that wants collaboration from her entire team in these huddles in order to be effective. Thank you, Savannah. You mentioned Dave Rubio, former coach of Arizona. He coached against some of these players like Brooke Nunnaviller and Morgan Hintz in he the Pac-12. He knows them well. Hintz steps in for a dime. Shut down. That is a massive block by Ali Bastianelli. Let's bring on our chair chat guest, Karis Watson. Testing, one, two. Hey there, can you hear me? Hi, yeah, I can hear you. All right, well, what are you making so far of this match? Um, it looks great from our side. We're just playing defense, we're playing really clean volleyball. I think everything is functioning the way that it should. The communication is top notch. And it looks like they're having a lot of fun out there. I love it. What were you hearing in the huddle during the timeout, Karis? Um, yeah, just a lot of talking about like what to look for. Um, just, you know, continue to go how we're going, like to keep the momentum on our side. Um, we're playing defense really well. And that's kind of like our focus at the moment. Um, we don't need to do anything too flashy. We just need to play our game. Um, yeah, play our system. Oh, and service pressure is really important as well. Being that We're Morgan really Hentz well. is a defensive-minded player, you talked about it, you just touched on it. Has that been the number one focus for your team? I would say yes. <laughs> We're talking a lot about blocking and a lot about uh, defense. <laughs> But the thing is, she can she can do it all. We just got a really good sub block. So like even if we can't close the block, she's she's there. She's in all the gaps. But we're just focusing on staying low and um, covering our area. Everybody doing their job and being solid. So thank yeah. you so much, Karis, yeah. for chatting with us. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> Team Hans leading 20 to nine. Willow Johnson unloads and a dig out of the lap. Team Linehan was celebrating. They could not believe that ball came back. The defense from Team Hence, wow. But I'll tell you, that was one of the first times Team Linehan in orange was in system. They ran a quick ball to Willow Johnson. She crushes that ball down the line and just pinball dig tool by Bastianelli in the middle. That was like a thigh dig by Rosenthal. I think it hit her leg. She was perfectly put. She gets five points for that. Willis out of the middle. The serve and pass game right now being won or dominated by Team Hens. Able to run that quick offense and isolate their middle blockers one on one. They're keeping the serves on Kendall White. And that block of Zaskia. A little higher than anticipated, I think, as they're going into it. Betty. 
time turning it the other way. Back court wasn't really high. Give it to Johnson again. Shut down by last week's teammate, Betty De La Cruz. And you and I, prior to this match, talked about those two particular players, the best hitters so far, performance-wise, facing off. Willow Johnson gets a piece and a deflection, and then here you see another transition opportunity to go Willow Johnson against Betty De La Cruz. Big hand stuff for Team Hence. Dug by Nunaviller. She'll just handle it over. Tom Com back again. Change of speed by Willow Johnson. I think it was off the noggin. A little bit of a head block. Sent back by Brown. She leads the league in blocks coming into this week. And there's two of them. Johnson aiming for the high hands, the fingertips of De La Cruz misses. Well, every ball is coming up from Team Hence. I mean, they are the team that frustrates you and gets under your skin. It's just, and then you try and take flat high swings and you miss like that one there. There's 180 team points available in each map, plus match, plus your individual numbers. Tom Com, they're going back to Willow Johnson again and again. And Team Hens mixing up their offense a little bit more. That time to Willis. They are. I'd love to see Team Linehan use their middle attackers a little bit more. Bastianelli leads all players in hitting percentage, and they've barely been able to get her the ball. Now Kaz Brown doing a lot of nice work defensively, but give her some offensive opportunities. Set point, 24 to 10. White's pass is perfect. And that's what happens on a perfect pass. Block isn't on top of her. Bastianelli buries the ball. Team Hence was up in the air early, trying to fend the quick middle attack. Kaz Brown, you see the blocker jump, and that isolates Linehan out on that left side pin. For the match, or for the set, Linehan dug by Hentz. Good up by Kendall White. That's a tough ball. Not going to work outside the antenna. And Team Hentz wins set number one. Impressive performance first set. Really aggressive serving, but it was all about the defense of Team Hentz. A resounding win by Team Hence. Betty De La Cruz was active on the outside. It was the defense, though, of Team Hence shutting it down, both from blocking and from the backcourt. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel.
University of South Florida and the University of Louisville. Five ten outside hitter from Houston, Texas. Number seven, Aaron. Yeah. Uh, going back to Louisville was, I can't even. I've been trying to put it into words. Um, because my last volleyball uh, match was in that exact gym, so it was just, it felt like home. I just happened to be a card and proud of that part of that program. I still follow them. It's a family, and um, they're really building it from when I was there and even more now. Team Hens took set one, 25 to 11. That spring tour, that Oro Pro did last spring going around to colleges was really special. There were several players who went back and played like Erin did in her home gym. So cool, what a great experience when you don't think you're ever gonna get that opportunity to play where you spent those formative college years, but all of these players were able to return to the school they competed at in college and Erin Fairs got to go back to Louisville. She helped really establish one of the powerhouse programs in the country right now. Well, Savannah Collins was listening in on the huddle, and we've all got questions, Savannah, about Team Linehan right now. What did you learn in the huddle? What I took away from that huddle is the conversation was less about on-court technical changes that they need to make, but more so the mental side of the game and a shift that they need to make going into the second set. And there were some tough conversations going on amongst the team. We need to be personally responsible for how we played and how we contributed to this game. We all need to be mentally more engaged. And that we beat ourselves. We did not come out with the intensity that we have to have in order to be able to compete against an offense like that. And then they kind of took it and flipped it. They said, there's no reason that we should feel defeated right now. If we beat ourselves, we have the opportunity to come out and make some changes. And hey, we've got great servers too. We can start to put that pressure on, but with some attitude and mental changes in the second set, we should start to see different results. Very interesting, Savannah. Thank you. I mean, Holly, they're not talking about the, what's on the court as much as the skill set. What do you, the mental skill set, what do you think Team Linehan needs to do at the start of the second set? It's all about the first contact. They were out of system most of the game because of the service pressure. And when you're out of system, you're playing one of the best defensive teams in the country and your offense is too predictable. You want to run Bastianella and Brown in the middle. So you have to take care of that first contact. Yeah, for people to understand the out of system, the issue with that is everybody knows where the set it, is going. It has to go left or right or out of the back row. And, and so your defense sets it up. I'm sorry. Well, it's a higher percentage kill, those quick attacks out of the middle. And that's why Bastianelli is hitting 430 because it's a high percentage play. And that's what you want to use. And it requires a really strong first contact. Team Linehan has first serve. They certainly were trying to feed Willow Johnson repeatedly in that set. But with Betty De La Cruz lined up against her again in this set, it's going to be interesting to see the way that their rotation is set up. They will face each other. Short serve again from Tom Kong. Betty and Willow squaring off. Linehan going for the down the line chop. Off hands, almost a no look by Betty De La Cruz. She goes cross body. She shows with her body that she wants to go angle, but the cross body in the arm again is so fast. That's what makes her such a dangerous attacker. So deceptive in the way that she hit tacks the ball. Jenna Rosenthal had a great week last week. You and I are both commenting on her physicality. There's her serve. Willow threads the needle. Well, this time, Team Linehan was able to pass that ball and work that matchup that they wanted. Willow Johnson against the smaller blocker, Natalia Valentin Anderson, on that pin, the setter for Team Hens. This time, it's Team Hens. That was out of system, not all their options. Everybody knew it was going to Betty De La Cruz. What's the difference? They still can't stop her. <laughs> Big, powerful arm cross court, getting out of trouble. Yeah, that's what you want, right, in your outside hitter? Players who can hit out of system are highly valuable, and that's one of the reasons why, even though she wasn't a captain this week, she went right 
off the top of the draft. Yeah, and for people understanding, the tempo of an out-of-system set, a delivery out to the pin, changes. It's not something where you have a steady rhythm. Correct, and it's usually a higher ball where the defense has more time to get set. Natalia Valentin Anderson serving. And there's an ace. Plant a tree, plant 10 trees. Yes, please. And 12 points. Valentin Anderson attacking the scene between Linehan and White, the two passers for Team Linehan. Serve as ace is one of the most points that you can score, 12 points. White underneath, two of them. That's back, 20 trees. Back to back serves from Valentin Anderson, getting Team Linehan in trouble. What's difficult about these serves? It's flat and it's got a lot of pace there between two players kind of into traffic and that's why she's having success with that serve. <laughs> Trying to go for a little lower to Willow Johnson there. Team Hens running the middle. Well, I love that Nutsara Tomcom for Team Lenahan ran a back quick bump set, not easy to do, but she's a confident setter. Here you see a fantastic dig by Morgan Hentz and transition ball in the middle to Emma Willis. That's a four point run. And this is why Morgan Hentz was the defensive player of the year last year for pickups like that. Block waiting for it. Betty De La Cruz changes pace. This is an out of system ball, if you will, to Willow Johnson. Zossi keeps it in. Straight down, De La Cruz sets that up. Betty De La Cruz, 81 in blue, is so disciplined with her block press. It is so fun to watch. Her hands are on her opponent's side of the net, so there's nowhere to go. It's not up and then over, it's just over. Yeah! Another ace serve. This has been a great run for Valentine Anderson. Team Hentz leading 7-1. We call this a fleeing serve, yeah! flat and clean and when you hit it like that the ball moves and drops and it's a tough ball to pass yeah it's not rotating so quickly team linehan calls a timeout so while they take a break we will too So y'all want the tea? Well, <laughs> what kind do you want? You want a super team tea steeped in drama from Sin City to Brooklyn? Or do you want something a little spicy? Because I got tea on all the trash talk in and around the W. <laughs> I saw y'all coming. We got sweet tea, bank shot tea, off-season tea, and don't forget the fits. But the tea party isn't over. I've got a lot more to spill. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Tops and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact. 
After Team Hentz won set number one, they are leading set number two, seven one. Linehan took a timeout at exactly the same point, seven one, Holly, in set number one. Team Hentz has jumped out to big leads in both sets. That's another point for Team Hentz because the attack off bears hit the antenna, and if it touches the antenna, it's out of bounds. Team Linehan looking for that good energy, trying to get some momentum on their side of the net. It just takes one or two plays to get that momentum to change jerseys. Fourth serve by Valentine Anderson. The first two were aces. Big dig by her, too. Sasia. I'll tell you, that time, Team Lanahan, Kendall White handled that pass. Bastianelli got a great swing out of the middle, but the defense answers again from Team Hentz. And it's all those out of system hits, right? Whether it's Betty De La Cruz on this one, Betty De La Cruz set Zassi. Service run continues. Making it fall away, and then a carve by Willow Johnson. Willow Johnson finally able to hit that sharp angle we saw a lot last week from her. Taking a look at the leaderboard, here you see the four captains, the top four in this leaderboard, leaderboard Edmund, Hens, Linehan, and Hilly. Betty De La Cruz, fifth. And so we're updating it live as we go along. We'll keep you informed of it. Bastianelli adding points. Betty. Ripping through the block. The arm speed so fun to watch. 81 in blue just ripping it through that scene. And Betty De La Cruz adding to these points. She's going to be in the top four by the end of this match. Of course, Edmund hasn't played yet. Was the overall leader. Back to Willow Johnson. If you're late on that block, she will make you pay. And back-to-back -back strong cross-court swings by Willow Johnson because Team Linehan's been able to pass that ball to TomCom in a good spot to run it fast to that pin. The block is taking away the line, forcing Willow Johnson to go that way, and it has been unstoppable so far. There's a big block from Brown and Fairs. That time, the defense of Team Lenahan in orange getting it done. Solid wall. That means two blockers closing things up, just creating a wall for the attacker. What's going on right now on Team Hentz's side is why I think that Hentz took none of It's like having two bros back there, two Libros next to each other. Exactly, two superior ball control players that can play defense, and obviously none can score as well offensively. Yeah, when you're talking about first contact, that's one of the big reasons why Team Hentz is doing so well. And every coach at every level says it all comes down to serve and pass, and that's what Morgan Hentz thought when she was drafting her team. Emma Willis will be serving now. Zossi Rosenthal and Nunneville are up front for Team Hentz. Outside quickly. Nunaviller gets up high. Was it a net violation though? Net violation from Team Lenahan. They have made a change at the setting position as well, just trying to change the energy out there on the court. Taylor Bruns, Tenegrat now serving, number 17 in orange. And she's connecting well, especially with the players on the right side. And Aaron Fairs delivers a beautiful kill from that right side pin. Down by seven in set number two. Fairs serve. And I mean, it was a bullet pass, not necessarily intentional, but a good feed to the middle. It was, but Valentine Anderson, 27 in blue, shot that ball quick to her physical six foot five, Jenna Rosenthal in the middle. Now, Holly, Team Hentz's front line is very small right now with Valentine Anderson on one side, Nunaviller on the other. 
see how they play it. Ball is up. Kendall White will put it over. Here's a ball. You should have all your options, and they do. They go back to Nunnerville, and she's jumping even higher than I've seen her. And you saw Valentine Anderson in the middle of that play directing traffic, telling Rosenthal to go behind to stress the block of Team Linehan. Obviously, Team Linehan out of system. They're going to get a free ball, so Valentine Anderson telling her hitters where to go. Rosenthal going behind her. Nana Miller coming inside. Yep, we're calling it a free ball because there's no play being run. It's just passed over. And so it's free in the sense you could do anything you want with it. Betty De La Cruz, are you kidding? That was almost a jump straight up for that ball. And out of the back row, you talk about her hand contact on the ball. You and I met her. She's got very big, strong hands, and she uses them really well. Look at that hand contact yeah. driving that ball down. When you shook her hand, your whole hand disappeared. It did. <laughs> Service is long, and here we are again at a nine-point lead for Team Hentz. We'll see if Ted and Grot can do something a little bit different with the offense going around this time. Ali Bastianelli is in the front, and I know you've talked about them that they want, you want to see Bastianelli get more involved. Ted and Grot touches the first ball. Back again. Tattooing that back line is Zaskia Hippa. Valentine Anderson leads Zaskia Hippa right in front of that three meter line. And I told you, Hippa loves to go down that line. If you're the block for Team Linehan, you want to move it and take it away from her. Team six, and if you look, the match score is at the bottom because we keep score from one set to the next to the next. It could be possible that you could lose the individual sets but win the overall match by just having more if, points. If you kept it close. Right. No, this is not likely in this one, yes, because it's been. But I'm saying you keep an eye on the match score down below as well. Rosenthal. The passing game for Team Hens, just really crucial to their success. And then you're able to use the physicality of Rosenthal offensively. Yeah, and at that time, you knew, Team Linehan knew it was going to one of the pins. You got Betty De La Cruz on one side, Rosenthal on the other. Team Linehan takes another timeout as they're down by 10. Let's go into the action now with the Air National Guard. Don't say anything. Don't no. tell me any secrets no, tonight. tonight. No telling secrets tonight. I love you on a broadcast. ESPN. Yeah, Willow! Golly, I'm happy she's on my team. We're, if we're going to tip... Yeah, if we're gonna tip, grab it and throw it down or take the setter out, right? Because Morgan's eating that up and she likes that. She likes to run across the court and be in rhythm, right? So keep that ball away from her. We're getting a little high on our block. We wanna like reach up with them, stay low and make them go high and we'll get good touches off those. But don't reach with them because that's where we're getting beat. Really good information from Kaz Brown on all that. She could be a fantastic coach in the future. Yes. When she's done playing, of course. And she certainly knows her opposition because Morgan Hentz will get tips. I mean, if you if that ball goes even a little bit up before it goes down, Hentz is there. I love that she said that. That's the kind of effect that Morgan Hentz has on a match. You want to avoid her part of the court. And she also said attack where the setter is. Make the setter take the first ball. So that means a non-setter will have to set. Kaz Brown talking about blocking as well. She leads the league in blocks after week one. So she knows of what she speaks. Let's take a look at the work of Zaskia Hippa, who has been fantastic so far today. Zaskia Hippa 
lines up as an opposite player. That means she attacks from the right side of the court most of the time, not always, but it's an important defensive position to shut down the power from the left side of your opponent, but it's a very important scoring position as well. Hippa's got four kills, seven digs, and a block. There's a good first pass so they can run the middle. That would be a free ball that we were talking about. You can run anything you want. And that, the kill, is what's supposed to happen in a free ball. Quick ball to the right side pin by Team Lenahan. Finally able to get the ball down against Team Hens. Yeah, when I say that's what's supposed to happen, it's because you have all those options. Linehan serving. None of Iller, dead on. Betty De La Cruz unloads cross court. Willis, little ball. Kendall White's all over it. Nona Miller digs her former Oregon teammate, Willow Johnson. And spent a lot of time in the gym. In the eye work, watching the attacker being in the right spot. I mean, Brooke Nunnaville or Morgan Hentz know where to be. They're used to taking a huge part of the court defensively, and it shows, and that keeps Team Hentz in the rally. Yeah, and certainly Brooke Nunnaville knows her fellow duck, Willow Johnson, well, lining right up. Valentine Anderson got a big scoring run last time around. Betty De La Cruz this time finds a touch. Morgan Hens is playing left back defensively. She saw a, a seam and she sees things before they happen. So she was in the middle of the court picking up that ball defensively. What do you mean by she saw a seam? Well, she saw a hole between the two blocks where the ball could possibly sneak through. And with her intuition, it paid off. Call it a mother's intuition, it's Hence's intuition. Sometimes they call the whole court Henceville because everything she feels is possible. Whoa, Bastian Nelly, great connection. What a fantastic one-handed set by Nutsara Tomcom to Bastian Nelly. We talked about her being the highest hitting percentage of all attackers. So you want to get her the ball in one hand feed. Bastian Nelly goes, attacks that right back position away from Morgan Hentz. Hentz puts this ball up, Zaskia again. Willow Johnson's getting a lot of swings. Big block, Kaz Brown. They're gonna go back again, and Kaz Brown's gonna try again, but it was out of bounds. Team Lenahan that time, huge block, but hand was not pressed back into the court enough. Team Lenahan working defensively, trying to score some points. Benny De La Cruz's serve is an ace. The pace of the serve of Betty De La Cruz creates problems, right? If you don't control your platform and get your platform out early enough, it's going to pop off your platform the wrong way. And that one just gets away from Aaron Fair of Team Linehan. Three aces for Team Hentz. Perfect pass allows them to set Brown in the middle. It's exactly what you said they needed to do. Team Linehan able to get their middles involved. And good things happen when you get your middles involved. Not only do they score at a high rate, but their defense tends to improve because they're more in a rhythm of the game. Look at Kaz Brown get there. A little cross body able to get away from Hentz. Nusara Tomcom is in the front court. Doesn't matter with an ace coming the other way. Team Lanahan off the arm of Willow Johnson, service pressure versus Team Hentz. And she will also hit from the backcourt on that right side. Tom Com is up front, the setter, so she'll be setting there. She'll still have three options at all times, and maybe four if they want to bring Linehan up the center. That's what they would want to exploit in terms of a mismatch. Zassi, 
High off hands. Fairs looking for hands and gets them. Aaron Fairs ends that rally by good swing, flat off the hands. Don't hit it down towards Nunaviller or hence, but flat off the hands deep in the court, and that pays off. And that's what we heard Kaz Brown talking about in her segment, is just talking about going high off the hands and seeing them. Willow Johnson continues her service run. Well, that was a really funky play. It certainly was. Brooke Nunneviller shot that ball really low to her setter, and there were not a lot of options to be had, but Willis able to get on top of that for Team Heads. I mean, just to be able to stand there as Emma Willis did, she didn't even jump, just pops it down, and I think everybody else was bracing for a more traditional attack, if you will. Well, it helps to be 6-3 and quick. I wouldn't know. On both, would count, I. on both counts. At least you got one of them. Long. It feels like Linehan, for much of this match, set one and set two, has been down by 10. We haven't even been able to call her name that much offensively because Hens is just dominating. Her team has been in control of this first two sets. Uh oh, there we can call Linehan's name. Finally, she had such a strong weekend last week and now finally able to score on the overpass. Credit fares with the strong serve. De La Cruz passes that one over. That was the third kill for Linehan. She's up front, so is Tom Com. Front court setter. And they're gonna go to Nunaviller because Tom Com is so much smaller. And that's the, the I mean, Brooke Nunderviller's not huge, but she knows where to attack that ball on that left side pin, going at Willow Johnson, who's playing defense in that right back. Just two points away from securing set number two is Hens' team. Linehan, though, another big kill. You feel her wanting to bring the energy up. Well, Team Linehan needs to use her. I mean, Allie Linehan is a huge weapon that I don't feel like has been an impact so far in this match. Kaz Brown serve to Nana Villar. Outside, quickly. Again. Nunaviller attacks twice. Puts Hent's team at set point. Nunaviller so quick off the floor. That ball shot pretty flat. Didn't have an apex to it, but she's able to get up and terminate. Brooke Nunaviller will be serving for the second set. Outside again to Linehan. Three swings, three kills. Three in a row, able to get number 37 in orange involved, and it's paid off. Also, really strong pass there, which enables them to run the offense that they want to run. Look, Team Linehan unlikely to win this set because this is another set point, but they're still attracting points for their team. And individually, Rosenthal, great dig. Linehan again, looking for that sideline, goes a little too wide, and set number two will end 25-16, match score 50 to 27. A little bit better by Linehan. They got 16 in that second set as opposed to 11. Little more offense from Linehan. That was key, hopefully getting some momentum in the right direction. A nine-point win for Team Hens over Linehan. Linehan, and they're continuing to roll. It's all about that first contact, and Hens and Brooke Nunderbiller are passing very well. Athletes Unlimited Volleyball on ESPN is sponsored by Tops and by Aspiration, a global leader in financing climate impact.
Team Hens leading Team Linehan two sets to none, 50 to 27 for their match score. Brooke Nunaviller, part of Team Hens, we got a chance to listen in to a little bit of her chatter. Serving. Let's go. Yes, yes, yes. We are yes. all together. Yes. yes. Let's go. Let's go. Talk a lot. We'll yeah. talk to each yeah, other. Yeah. I take ball and then I'll make a move in like on that slide. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I was like, I'll cover you. So I was like, I have to cover you. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> go! Yeah, yeah. Love the communication by Brooke Nunaviller. Communication, especially at this level, is so important. Knowing seams and how to work together in the back row. She, Betty De La Cruz, and Morgan Hentz are the serve-receive team. They need to communicate on responsibilities. Yeah, a lot of success for Team Hentz. Meanwhile, Team Linehan having a hard time. Savannah, what kind of light can you shed on what's going on over there? So we talk a lot about what captains want to be able to get in their draft and then execute. But today we're doing something a little bit different. We're talking about how Linehan is having to pivot. She usually likes to play opposite another outside that can really go after it and bang balls. Think like being with Leah Edmond last week. And this week she's starting to have to take on that role. That's not something she's usually as comfortable doing. She likes to be crafty, pick apart a defense. But like you said, we started calling her name a lot more in that second set. And it's because she is stepping into that role of being the more powerful outside on her team because that's what they're needing this week out of her. So not necessarily what she planned for in her draft or the style she likes to play in, but it's how she's adjusting as the captain of this group. Terrific, Savannah Maria Schlegel on the other side. What is Willow Johnson? Is she involved in these timeouts or conversations at all? Do I still have Savannah? Willow's been involved really just trying to get on the same page. I haven't seen her take on a lot of feedback for her team, but more so talking with her setter, talking with her facilitator, really just trying to get adjusted because she's been in the outside position a little bit more this game too. It's something she tried to focus on in her off season. It's not something she's always been super comfortable in. But I think the biggest thing I'm seeing from Willow Johnson that I didn't see in week one was really having some tough conversations to try and step into this game to be more confident. Great, great information, Savannah. Kenna White makes that ball a little bit better. That is a sharp cross from Rosenthal. Johnson and Linehan are both down. They're working their way back to the court now. Yeah, they were lined up for the block, Holly, but just didn't conclude it. I love the effort on Team Linehan. Orange bodies flying all over the floor to keep it alive. It started with the dribbler serve, able to get it back and stay in the rally. But Team Hens comes out on top. Yeah, whenever a serve hits the tape and over, it's just so hard to read. Over the top and down is Kaz Brown. We want to talk to somebody who's had quite a week coming in. Blake Muller has joined Team Linehan. Blake, you joined on Wednesday. There was an injury suffered by somebody else. What did you get the call and how? what was that like? I actually got a call Tuesday afternoon. Um, I had talked to Kaz and they were like, we need a middle and I was just coaching. So. 36 hours later, I was packed up and uh, heading out to Phoenix. I arrived yesterday afternoon and came straight to practice. How much have you actually been playing? Um, I've been playing a little bit. I was at South Alabama um, from the start of preseason um, up until now. So I've had my hand on the ball, but I have not been competing since I left France in April. <laughs> How excited are you to be a part of this high level pro league here in the United States? Oh my gosh, it's such an amazing opportunity just to be able to say that I'm back home playing in the United States um, with such an amazing group of women um, at such a high level. It's something I never thought I would get to say. Um, so I, I, it, there's no words. <laughs> So you haven't played since April? Since you I have not, yes. So how since was practice yesterday? 
Um, I actually was a very low key practice. Um, I left at 5 a.m. from Mississippi, so by the time I got here, I wasn't really functioning. So <laughs> they let me take it light, um, but I had a really good practice with them this morning, and they, it's been a great team to come into. Well, welcome. We're so happy to have you here. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. It's a great event. Uh, professional volleyball in the United States. Of course, we talked about the spring tour that these athletes took, many of them going back to visit the campuses in which they cut their teeth in the college years. Pass is good. Rewarding with the set. Double quick right there from Team Linehan. And Fairs again being creative offensively, going flat and high off the hands. That's a good way to avoid Nunviller and Hentz in the backcourt. And just keeping in mind the scoring, that was a nice 10 points with the good pass and the kill. If Team Linehan, where it's close now, is able to win this set, that's 40 points for every member of their team, something they really need right now. Yeah, in that confidence and momentum, they've got the personnel. They just need to figure out how to work together to best maximize their talents. Pass is perfect. Johnson no longer hitting down when Betty De La Cruz is up there. Bastianelli block. Linehan more aggressive, as Savannah told us. And you can read it on Willow Johnson. She was not going to get used. She pulled her hands down on another one, and then she got used. So important, especially with Betty De La Cruz. She is so good at attacking that outside hand out of bounds. If you're Willow Johnson, you need to make sure your right hand is pressed back into the court for Team Linehan. Service ace. Natalia Valentin Anderson is so talented at that cross court serve into traffic. It's flat, it's moving, like I said earlier, it's fleeing. And you see the movement. She's serving into traffic. There's three players in orange in that area of the court. She's had a lot of success for her team from there. Third ace for Valentin Anderson. There's the power from Linehan back out to Betty De La Cruz. It is a gunshot, different speed coming off of her arm. Well, I have to say, Nana Villar and Hentz, both of them are used to having the green light defensively to just roam the back of the court. They were both all over each other defensively. Watch them crash <laughs> into each other because they're both reading that same game. Very special defensive players, those two. What can happen on the other side of that is the worst. They're both there thinking the other takes it, so we'll take the crash, right? Always. Linehan changes pace, sets behind her. Your out of system hitter is Betty De La Cruz. She's aiming for hands and gets them. And another kill for Betty De La Cruz. Betty De La Cruz shows she's got all the tools. We've seen her threading the needle down the line, sharp that time, just high and flat off the hands. They were out of system. 13 kills for 81 in blue, Betty De La Cruz. De La Cruz has 13 kills, as you talked about, and that has moved her into third place on the leaderboard. Let's check in with Savannah. We've been talking so much about how effective Betty De La Cruz is, and there's a piece on the draft board, and we're seeing play out on the court that makes it work. And it's the server, Natalia Valentin Anderson. She's capable of serving, of setting this really unique ball that Betty likes, that not all setters in this league have. It's kind of this high and arching ball. Betty loves that. And Natalia and Betty are really good friends off the court at practice and in their free time. They are always together. So they've got a connection beyond the volleyball court. But it's because she has this great ball for Betty that this offense works. And Morgan Hintz wasn't sure she was going to be able to draft De La Cruz this week. That was a surprise that she was still up on the board, even with the number two overall pick. So when she was able to get Betty, she goes, we have to create an offense that works for her. And it impacted her picks. And that's exactly what they did. As soon as they picked Betty De La Cruz, they asked, hey, 
Who do you, who do you like to hit off of? She said Valentin Anderson, and it was done. Welcome back. Third set between Team Hentz and Team Linehan. Team Hentz been dominating the first two sets and this one, 11-3. For every ace during this year's Athletes Unlimited Volleyball season, Aspiration is committed to planting 10 trees. Heading into this week, 280 trees. And Holly, they have added more trees today. They certainly have. Natalia Valentin Anderson has had five of her own, but her team has been putting so much pressure on Team Lanahan from the service line. Betty De La Cruz adds to the aces and planting more trees as well. Seven total from this match between the two teams right now. And there's another serve. Well passed. Bastianelli able to connect in the middle. Bastianelli out of this one because of the pass. Here's Betty De La Cruz. Bastianelli makes a big difference there next to Willow Johnson. And net violation for Team Hentz. Emma Willis was trying to play that ball out of the net. It popped up high along the net. You see that, and she touches the bottom of the net before she plays it. High flat touch, rolls, and then unfortunate. Perfect pass, one arm set. Hence sets De La Cruz. The queen, Betty De La Cruz on the right side. I mean, she lines up as a left side attacker, but she can score from both pins. That time, she was on the right. Just so dangerous. Part of the Libro's job, in, in addition to digging balls, obviously, and serve receive, is setting. Would you call Morgan Hentz amongst the elite setters in the world? I would. When she's behind that three meter line, she's allowed to set with her hands. But from in front of that, it's her platform, and she is one of the best in the world. Big kill out of the middle by Kaz Brown. Coming up next at 9.30 Eastern time here on ESPN Plus, Team Edmund versus Team Hilly. That's gold and purple who will be playing against each other. Of course, Leah Edmund, number one overall last week in points. Able to bring it back. This is a traditional three ball. Options available. Pass is perfect. And that's what happens. Relent yeah, relentless pressure from Team Hence because they're consistently in system. They put the pressure on Team Lanahan. They get free balls. They control hard driven balls where they're able to put the ball in Natalia Valentin Anderson's hand so she can run it wherever she wants. Out of the middle, Kaz Brown. 
Kaz Brown goes behind the setter. She's been trying to hit that ball deep line. That one tags for Team Lenahan. Allie Linehan behind the service line. Pass is pulled off a little bit, taking the middle out. But that's all right. Brooke Nunaviller has attack. Now the middle's available. And more heat from Nunaviller. It's so fun to watch Brooke Nunaviller in the rhythm she gets in after she passes. She is so good, disciplined, getting ready and in a nice rhythm with her setter timing and tempo-wise. Yeah, that's something that people like to do to try to take a hitter out is serve them. But for Nunaviller, it works the opposite way. No problem for her. <laughs> Off one foot, Kaz Brown behind, saying she saw a touch. But the officials did not, nor the line judges. Kaz Brown talking to her teammates, asking for a challenge. I'm not sure the block got a piece of that. But the whole team, boy, that was that was a lot from them. So. All of Team Linehan calling it immediately. Well, the ball didn't look like it had topspin. A, a true hit usually has topspin where the hitter's hand comes over the ball, driving the ball down into the court. That one had, did not have that kind of spin. Look at the match score down low, 65-33. Team Linehan has never been able to get the flow that they need. And this could be an all-time low for a match score. Another ace for Team Heads. And they've been relentlessly going to that cross-court area. We call it area one. And it's that right back area, and they've had tons of success. Another 10-point lead. This has been the story of this match. Team Heads up by 10 over Linehan. Every year, Thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments through the falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. This has been all team Hentz leading by 10. And Morgan Hentz, not only captain, but she's been a vacuum in the backcourt. Well, you and I got to cover Morgan Hentz when she was at Stanford, leading them to multiple national championships. She is something special in the right spot. Just the way she sees the game, I feel like she reads into the future. Great eye work and the quality of her digs. Not only is she digging it, but she's putting the ball in the setter's hands. And that is a dream come true if you're a setter. You and I were both setters. We know that. We love that. Morgan had 14 kills so far tonight. Digs. digs excuse me. <laughs> They're killer digs. Thank you for that. <laughs> yes. Digs. She was the Defensive Player of the Year last year. 300 MVP points. There are MVPs voted at the end of each match. Of course, she set the Oro Pro record with 229. And you and I talked to Dave Rubio before this match, and he talked about the attention to detail from Morgan Hentz. He's been really impressed. He, he just listens because he coached against her in the Pac-12. He was the head coach at Arizona, but he was impressed by the attention to detail. Yeah, last week she had an incredible match where she had 25 digs last Friday in a match versus Betty De La Cruz.
Good shots. Line judge says out, there was a hesitation. The, he was overruled. Yeah, it looks like Aaron Ferris tagged that ball down the line and looks like there's a challenge from Team Hens. They thought that ball was out. Interesting, the line judge said it was out. Team Hens wants to challenge it. Now she hasn't used any challenges. Morgan Hens, so they could also just be using it to stop for a moment. Yeah, or they're just being relentless and they don't even want to give up one point. So the captain's challenge, here's how it get, goes. You get two challenges per set. They can be used for review of in out or ball on the floor, net or block touch that we've seen, and then line faults, whether you're stepping on the line. Ooh. I think it's a shadow we're seeing on the line. I'm so glad I don't have this job. I, I see that out on the replay. Originally, I thought it was in. I thought it tagged the line, but gosh, could have got a sliver. I think it's the shadow hitting it. But I'm always wrong, too, so it's <laughs> it's really bad news for Team Linehan that I think it was out. <laughs> the call will stand, and that ball was called in by the up referee. So Team Linehan gets the point. And they finally and the get a break. Let's get some momentum on their yeah. side of the net. Betty De La Cruz. And now they're scrambling. Ball coming. Instead of going to the middle, they go back to Brooke Nunneviller. Back quick, Rosenthal crushes the ball. What a feed from Natalia Valentin Anderson to Jenna Rosenthal behind her. Substitution coming in for Team Hentz. No setter on the floor for Team Hentz. Yeah, they're bringing in a big blocker in Lindsay Vanderweide. Outside. And Aaron Fares goes flat and high. Natalia Valentin Anderson will come back to run the offense. So they brought in that sub just to block. Just to block, and I was waiting for a dig to see who Me was actually too. gonna transition set that ball. I think it would have been Morgan Hentz, unless she digs it, in which case it would have been none of Iller. I think it was gonna be Hentz. Rubio was pointing at her. Rosenthal, you and I were talking privately about her last week. She has been power. And, and on both sides of the ball, she puts up a big block defensively, has a really nice offensive range. Fun to watch at six foot five, making a big impact for Team Hentz. Yeah, Rosenthal with seven kills in this match. She was a standout player from Marquette. Betty De La Cruz up front too. She's got 15 kills. Nice pass by Kendall White. Little Johnson getting around it with her left hand. And just patrolling the net. Allie Bastianelli just owning the net. As a middle blocker, you want to make sure you're doing the right eye work, knowing where the ball's going, but also make sure your hand's on the other side of the net. Quick ball there. Over the net. The middle blocker from Illinois scores for Team Lenahan. Outside, Betty De La Cruz. Good block, Bastianelli. She's the only one who's had an answer consistently for Betty De La Cruz. And then turns it the other way. So nice to reward your middle blocker. She's doing it defensively, working in transition to make herself available. And Ali Bastianelli, beautiful swing in transition. That's a great point, Ali. She gets in the air every time, because I noticed on another ball where you were pretty sure the middle wasn't going to get set. She's still trying to draw some attention. And that's a setter's dream. Wow, I didn't see that touch, but Team Lenahan is not surprised. They're not arguing it. 
You talked about that Willow Johnson, Betty De La Cruz matchup. We're seeing it play out over and over again. There's that set to the left side and then just getting the right arm of Willow Johnson. Ball behind, picked up by De La Cruz, blocked. And going for high hands, Zaskia doesn't get it. Point, Team Linehan. I feel like defense is contagious. If you're on the same side of the net with Hens and Nunnaviller, look at De La Cruz getting down on the ground. Beautiful cover in the middle of the court to dig that ball. Hippa goes flat, but no touch from Team Lenahan. Bastianelli serving now. De La Cruz, nice pass. Nunnaviller from the back court. Linehan, keeping that ball high. Zassi, blocked. Kaz Brown and Willow Johnson combined. Wow, meet Kaz Brown, number 10 and orange. Obviously, Willow Johnson set up that block. Kaz Brown gets there and closes the door. The best blocker from week one. Has Brown a dominating force. She changes what you want to do offensively. Betty. Back again, Betty, one blocker. That hurt. You know what I like about that play? Not only does Betty De La Cruz have a, a powerful arm, all the tools, she knows who her defenders are in the backcourt. Bastianelli was playing left back for Team Lenahan, and she tipped on her, knowing that that's hard for a middle blocker to pick up that tip. Because? Because they <laughs> that's a bigger body moving and covering a big part of the court, which usually a small defender or defensive specialist does. Willow Johnson returning. It started with that first contact from Team Lenahan. Team Lenahan able to stay in system, and Willow Johnson's had a relatively quiet match compared to what we saw last week. Betty De La Cruz keeps climbing that leaderboard. It's ever-changing. We're updating it for you. You know, Morgan Hentz, she's the first-time captain we talked about. She's also the first Libro to be captain since Tiffany Clark in 2021. And I think it just makes up a different team. Meanwhile, a great serve. And you just jinxed her because Willow Johnson able to get Morgan Hentz to, to make a, an error passing, right. which almost never happens. Well, she's not a robot. We know that now. We weren't sure before. Okay, yeah, I wasn't <laughs> right. sure till now. <laughs> Sending it back. I love the personality of Kaz Brown. Me too, just patrolling the net. She is up and over, sees a dink coming and just swats it down. Look at her, boom, and then the swagger after. I love it. Yeah, her arms basically are saying, are you not entertained? Willow Johnson going down the line at Nunnaviller. Nunaviller now rotating to the front court as Emma Willis is serving. Rosenthal in the middle. Over. First time we've seen a setter call her own number today. And finally, Morgan Hentz was actually off the court. Yeah. So they were able to get the ball to drop. Beautiful setter attack. Two hands right to the middle of the court. The donut is what we call it because usually defenders play the perimeter of the court. It's easier to move in than to back up. The donut's one name for it. The campfire, campfire. is the other, right? Everybody yep. in a circle looking at each other. I heard the players refer to it as the donut, so that's there the word go. I went with. Yeah, either way, there's lots of different ways. It can be the bagel, too. None of them are good. Not a villain. Continuing to soar. It looks like Team Linehan, in fact, Team Linehan will, have, unfortunately, the lowest all-time score for three sets. In 2021 and 2022, 54 was the lowest for Team Linehan. They never got it going today. And Team Hens, we have to credit them. I mean, the pressure that they've been able to put on their opponents has been pretty impressive. 
Why not back to back? Well, and that's what I was starting to say with, with Hens being only the second Libro ever to be captain, the team is built entirely different. And the fact that she added another Libro to her team as in Brooke Nunneviller, who's played that position, it's, it's really interesting. Off the block, well covered by Linehan. Willow Johnson, full swing. Outside again, gets the touch. Point team Linehan, the best scoring set they have had. Bruns Tegenroth, the setter, number 17 in orange, has come in and sparked this team Linehan. This one, a quick ball to the left side. Aaron Fares has been making a living going high and flat off the hands deep. Rosenthal again. So strong behind the setter. She really is. It's just the range with which, where she hits at the high contact point, which is tough to defend. Great pass by Kendall White. Again, Setter wants to attack. I don't know that Rosenthal even jumped. Let Betty handle it. Until they get it, she's gonna keep running that play. One arm stab, brought back. Free ball. Outlasting. Team Hens wins the rally. Team Lenahan wins Lenahan. the rally, Team but Lenahan. it wasn't easy. Team Hens makes it so hard. I mean, the, per the whole team was pursuing that ball. But Team Lenahan able to outlast Hens in that last rally. Look at the pursuit. You see HIPAA, but everybody with her trying to help her get that ball over the net. Betty De La Cruz. Couple of attack errors. Team Linehan finding some momentum. Holly, they're only down by three. If they can pull out a win in this set, they get some extra points here. 40 per person. De La Cruz claims credit, responsibility for that one. Just a little too much turn. Yeah, can't do that, Holly. The referee is oh. saying that ball crossed the plane of the net, and Natalia Valentin Anderson is a back row setter, so that ball is awarded to the orange team, Team Lenahan. Down only by two now. Team Hens takes their first time out of the match. Watch this serve. Betty De La Cruz passes that ball a little oh. too tight. She's Valentin in the net. Anderson, yes, in the net. I thought that they called that ball over the net. Ooh, yep, she gets body yeah. on, the, on the net. A full checkered shirt at this point. Her yep. <laughs> Allie Linehan was part of that spring tour, and she was pretty thrilled to go back to Kentucky. Representing the University of Kentucky is, um, I think, the biggest uh, just honor and blessing. I, when I was 15 years old, decided to make that commitment to Kentucky and I had no idea what I was doing the next day. I was just a young girl who didn't know her, what major she wanted to go after, um, you know, what degree, anything like that. But I knew I loved the people at Kentucky, the culture, you know, the past success, I think speaks for itself that there are great people, competitors who, um, you know, are just gonna continue to uplift that program. And I think everyone, it's just really proud to be from Kentucky and say that that's, you know, we're alums of the University of Kentucky. Allie Linehan playing great today, first time captain, and she's been playing really well. Yes, I, I just have to comment on that. She had 26 kills leading Kentucky to an NCAA championship her last year at Kentucky. That was a big deal. I remember it was the former Allie Stumler, now Allie Linehan, but she's talented. She can play defense, she can play offense, and she's had a big impact in this third set. Yeah. 
Allie Linehan, six kills, three digs. Of course, as Savannah Collins told us, she had to change her approach here. Well, and I'll correct myself, Holly, this is not the lowest point uh, to score total. Last Monday, uh, there was a team that had 44 total points. So Linehan's not going to carry that weight. Well, good. Good. You don't want that. Yeah, they're with 48 points right now. And the opportunity to win this set, it comes down to a couple of plays. That's a big play. Blocked. Bastianelli. And that's a really strong combination. Willow Johnson, 44, and Ali Bastianelli just putting up a wall against Betty De La Cruz, one of the best hitters in the country, in the world. If your team hats, you want Betty De La Cruz up front, and if you are Team Linehan, you want this combination of Willow Johnson and Bastianelli to block her. Another big block, Bastianelli doing work. Goes soft, balls up. Willow Johnson backs up. Gets Bastianelli to take it down with her Holly. How did Betty De La Cruz do it? Well, she has so many different weapons. You don't know what she's going to do that time. Just the Midas touch, a, a, a short ball attack in the middle of the court goes off the inside hand of Bastianelli, who I think is ready for the power. Set point, Team Hentz. And not so fast. Team Linehan still alive. They'll have to fight off another set point in order to pull even. And finally, Willow J Johnson able to score on that left side against the smaller blocker of Valentin Anderson of Team Hentz. And Savannah Collins telling us that's something she worked on during the summer. Set point, Team Hentz. Nice dig by Fairs. Here comes Betty De La Cruz again. Off hands again, Willow Johnson follows her own. Off the head, Team Linehan has done it. They fought off two set points by Team Hentz. The defensive effort by Team Linehan Watch this play. It starts at the net with the, well, it starts with a dig here. This is from the beginning of the rally, but there's a deflection here by Willow Johnson, and she pursues the ball, keeps it alive, and they're able to score that point for Team Lenahan. Out to Betty De La Cruz again, blasting through the block of Bastianelli. That's rare. It, it's hard. You just have to be so disciplined with the arm speed of Betty De La Cruz to shut her down in Bastianelli. Left a small opening, and De La Cruz takes it. Valentine Anderson behind the service line for set point number three for Team Hentz. Linehan. Here goes De La Cruz. And it's just too much. Betty De La Cruz closes it out for Team Hentz for an overall score 26-24 in this set, 76-51 Team Hentz overall. What a defense of performance from Team Hentz. I mean, from the beginning, they just set the tone with their defense, but obviously they've got the arms to score. Betty De La Cruz, exclamation point on this victory, high and flat off that big Team Lenahan block in front of her. With 19 kills by Betty De La Cruz, she might be making a push for captain again next week. Oh yeah, she wants to draft her own team, but right now, repping Team Hence really well. And look at the scores there. So uh, again, it's another 120 points, 180 points, 180 points, my math, for Team Hence on top of all the other points they've gotten because they won all those sets and the overall. And you'll see a lot of blue players move way up the leaderboard because of their performance. Brooke Nunnabiller, part of that performance was pretty spectacular, had 12 digs and seven kills.
Brooke Nunneville are held down the backcourt, both defensively and in serve receive. And when they called her number, she was very effective, taking some smart swings, managing her offense well. And we'll come right out of that highlight. Savannah Collins is with the two Libros for Team Hens. Okay, Morgan, we talk a lot about how teens can take on the identity of their captain. Can you ask much more from this defense tonight? No, I mean, we were super scrappy and our block was putting up some really nice hands so we could work around it. And I just really love the scrap of our team. It feels kind of like you have two liberos on this team playing alongside Brooke. Brooke, you had 12 digs, seven kills. You look so comfortable out there. What clicked in week two? I think my teammates, I mean, like she said, like we kept everything really calm. And I mean, even before, right after Morgan drafted me, I'm like, this is going to be team defense all day. And we've <laughs> talked about how much we love playing together, especially in the USA gym. So we finally get a chance to do the outside libero dynamic. And I mean, it's easy to play right next to her. Morgan, I want to know a little bit about that dynamic from your perspective, having Brooke as an outside, but then also having Betty De La Cruz, who was absolutely terminal tonight. How did the two of them complement one another on the court? I just think it's so easy to play next to Brooke because it's like playing next to a second libero on the court, yet she has such a high volleyball IQ. It can score at a high level. And then same for Betty. I mean, she was making some really smart swings going after the edges of the block, and that's, again, just a high volleyball IQ. You've got practice tomorrow. How do you build on this tonight? I really liked our service pressure. I thought that was good, knocking the other team out of system and making it easier on our defense. I think we just continue our scrap, um, our grit, and our service pressure. Morgan, Brooke, thank you so much. Thank you. And Marie, back to you. Well, let's listen in to Brooke Nunneviller in the last play of that match. Oh, you got it. Cross. Some good energy on team heads, that's yeah. for sure. Really yeah. excited about it. And again, you heard Nana Biller speak about playing in the USA gym last summer with Morgan Hens. That chemistry. Incredible. And and it started, you know, from the beginning, they were a great team on the defensive side, but their offense held it down as well. Yeah. And for those wondering, you can say Libro or Libero both ways. They say Libro. Karch Karai says it, so that's why I say it. Either way works for you. Team Hence a win, 76-51. It was complete domination. Coming up at 9.30 Eastern on ESPN Plus, four Athletes Unlimited Volleyball. We'll get a chance to look at Team Edmund, the gold team, versus Team Hilly, purple. For Holly McPeak and Savannah Collins, I'm Anne Marie Anderson. Thank you for joining us. Once again, our final overall score, Team Hens 76, Team Linehan 51.